I am Laura Dixon, and you are listening to the Naturally Thin for Life podcast, episode number 212, Choice Becomes Habit. Welcome to the Naturally Thin for Life podcast. Get ready to learn how to live in your dream body, free from all the diet rules. You're going to learn the naturally thin mindset and strategies so that you never need to count, track, or measure your food ever again. And instead, you get to live the rest of your life at your body's optimal weight with the peace and freedom you've been craving. Let's dive in. Hello, friends. Welcome to this week's episode where we are going to talk about how to use your choices very deliberately to become a habit, right? When you want a new habit, that means you need to make some new choices. And so often, I think we're just so frustrated in dieting, right? We're like so sick of not being at the weight we want. We've tried so many times before. So we want it to be done yesterday. <laughs> we we want it to be easy. We want it to be effortless. And all of that is available to you. But it's really important to remember that choice, repetitive choice begets a habit, right? Choice after choice after choice after choice after choice becomes habit, right? That's how it's designed to be. And whether or not we did it intentionally, there is a choice to overeat that becomes a habit, right? Every time you put anything into your mouth, it's a choice. Now, for many of us, we've made that choice so many times before, it feels very automatic. It feels very much like we aren't necessarily choosing. Sometimes it can feel like we're doing it against our own will. But I think it's important to remember that we've made that choice so many times that that's why it's become a habit and to remember that it is in fact a choice. Because like I was saying, we want eating when we're hungry, stopping when we're satisfied, choosing food that feels good in our body, like to just be so easy and effortless. And it can be. But you need to work for that habit, right? It's not just going to come knocking at your door and overtake your body and there you go, right? We got to work for it. So I was trying to find an analogy and the one that I was thinking of is like when I was dating. So when you choose to date someone, right? And let's say you are going on a lot of dates. This wasn't necessarily me, but you can, you'll can you get the analogy, right? So you choose to go on a first date with someone and then you might choose... Nope, not a second date, right? And then you choose like, yep, go on a date with this one, not a second date. And then you go on a second or a third date with someone and like chose no, right? So you make all these choices. And then finally, there's someone you meet and then you choose a second date and you choose another date and you choose another and another and another and another, right? All with the same person. And so you've chosen to be in a relationship with this person over and over and over and over and over again, right? So many times. So much so that then, let's say, a very attractive man walks past and you don't really even notice him in the way that you would have six months earlier, where your brain kind of stops seeing other men in this example as options. And you might still notice that someone is good looking, but that like desire or attractiveness or pull to that other person who is not your chosen person it's gone because you've chosen this other human that you're really committed to in a relationship. And maybe you're married at this point, but you've chosen to be in, let's say, a lifelong partnership with this other person. And you're so committed to them because you've chosen them over and over and over and over and over, like, right, like hundreds, thousands of times, so much so that it's so ingrained and it's so much become a habit that that desire for something else is gone. And the same can be true for food. Your desire for that really tempting food over there that's going to leave you feeling terrible in your body, it can completely go away when you are so committed and you've just made the choice over and over and over and over and over again to feel really good in your body. And when you think about this back to the relationship example, for me personally, it doesn't feel like I'm actively choosing to stay committed to my husband. Now, of course I am, right? Of course it's a choice and I could change my mind at any moment, but I'm not like every day waking up like, okay, I have a choice to make. It's like a really hard choice or like, okay, I've got to make a change. Like it's not, it's like a choice that's just on autopilot, right? Because I've made that choice so many times before and I'm so committed to it. And in the beginning, it's not always that way, right? Like when we're evaluating like, 
do I want to be with this person? Do I not want to be with this person? Then it's like, do I want to, you know, commit to this person in a lifelong relationship? Do I want to have kids with this person? Right. We go through this choice making process and then we like choose it over and over and over and over and over again. And it becomes so second nature that it's so ingrained now. I am not like, oh, I have this choice to make every day. Like I was saying, you know, when I wake up, it's just like an automatic choice. And so when you're really committed to something, And you've made that choice over and over and over and over and over again to feel so great in your body, it does become second nature. And the where and the what of the food might change, but the choice to feel incredible is the habit. And yes, we want it to be effortless to put that fork down when we still feel, you know, nourished and energized and light and clean, but it's not necessarily effortless in the beginning. Right. Because for many of us, for so long, we've made the choice to eat past our optimal satisfaction level. We've made the choice to eat when we're not hungry. We've made the choice to justify why we are going to eat the food that's not going to feel good in our bodies. And so if you want it to be effortless, know that that can be the end goal, but it has to be choice after choice after choice. Right. You're making intentional decisions. When you want to make a change, you have to recognize that you're making a change, right? You're doing something different. And there's going to be some energy and effort that goes into that change, right? Imagine, and this is, of course, not something that I'm imagining, but imagine in my relationship example that then, you know, I, you know, I wake up every day and I love my husband, committed, lifelong together. We have all these kids together. Now, imagine if I was like, I'm going to make a change today. I think maybe. I want to change who I'm in a relationship with. Do you know how much energy and effort that would take, right? Like all the mental discomfort and emotional discomfort, like that would be very, very, very uncomfortable. Again, not on the table for me. But I'm just saying when you imagine that shift and that difference, it can kind of shine a light on when you've done something for so long for so many years, then to make a change, yes, there is some mental energy and effort. And it will be uncomfortable when you're changing the way that you think about your hunger and your satisfaction level and your food. And it's only uncomfortable because it's different. And what I want to offer to you is that that discomfort of change is way less uncomfortable than constantly feeling physically uncomfortable, right? The mental discomfort of deciding to put the fork down when you still feel energized, light and lean, but your brain's like, but I mean, a few more bites, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you got to clean your plate, right? That discomfort of making the choice to no, no, I'm not going to eat because I want to feel really good. It's so much more fleeting and temporary than feeling bloated and lethargic for hours after you've eaten. And so I think it's just important that I want to share with you that we recognize that there is some discomfort and that to have a new habit, you have to go through that discomfort with an intentional choice, an intentional choice, an intentional choice, and an intentional choice, and it will become a habit. And when we want it to be done yesterday and we give up and we don't make choice after choice after choice so that it can become a habit, right? Because we think it should be happen faster than it's happening or we think it should be more effortless, like right out of the gate. What happens then is you rob yourself of the rest of your life having this incredible, amazing relationship with food in your body. So I want to sort of sell you on the idea that the temporary discomfort of making that change is so, so, so worth it. And like I said, it pales in comparison to the physical discomfort of feeling subpar. The more and more you make the choice to eat in a way that feels great in your body, the more and more you love feeling great in your body and the easier and easier that choice gets to favor feeling good over not feeling good. This is why I recommend you use the buckets approach. So I talk about the buckets on the podcast. I have a previous podcast where I teach you how to implement the buckets more in depth. And of course, if you join the Not Trade Thin for Life membership, we talk a lot more about them, how to really customize them to you, how to know your hunger level, how to know your satisfaction level, right? How to make that all very personal to you. But essentially, if you've never heard about the buckets before, you can totally go back to one of the prior podcast episodes. But the buckets approach essentially, and the reason I call it the buckets is I don't really know. That's just the name I came up with a long time ago when I was working with people one-on-one and I just was like, okay, 
So every single person that I'm working with, and this is how I approach my food as well, I'm like, they use this approach and it works when they use it. And I'm like, oh yeah, and this is like kind of what I did, right? When I was losing weight, I didn't have like a method or, you know, a naturally thin method I was following. I was like creating it as I was going. I was doing a ton of trial and error. And this buckets approach is essentially you choose your body's optimal hunger level. You choose how you want to feel when you're done eating and you choose food that's going to allow you to feel that way. Right. So it might sound like, okay, a scale of one to 10, my optimal hunger level is a seven. I want to feel light, clean, and energized when I'm done. And so in order to feel that way, I'm going to eat some avocado toast, right? And in the food, sometimes I suggest you give yourself a bunch of options, right? You don't want to feel restricted or deprived. You might be like, I maybe I choose avocado toast. Maybe I choose curry and rice. Maybe I choose eggs. Maybe I choose a salad. Maybe I choose some soup. Whatever, right? You can give yourself a ton of options with the food. But what's really important is you're choosing your optimal hunger level. You're choosing how you want to feel when you're done eating. And you're getting very specific with that language. Like in my example, light, clean, and energized. And then you think about the food. What food is going to allow me to feel that way? Right? So when you do this and you are choosing, making these intentional choices, what happens is you use a different part of your brain that isn't used to making habitual decisions all of the time. You are able to make a change because you're imagining how you want to feel in your body. And you're like, okay, in order to do that, I'm going to do this and this and this. It's kind of like planning your day. You're like, okay, to get, you know, have the most effective, efficient day, I'm going to do this and this and this and this, right? Like, Some people live without a calendar. That's totally great if you live that way. I just personally am not that way. (laughs) The way I feel the best and get the most done throughout my day is I just like plan it. And the reason this is so important with food and your body and losing weight is because you have to remember you're making a change. So you have to make a deliberate, intentional, different choice. And if you rely on your willpower to do that in the moment when you're hungry, or you rely on your willpower to do that and not really have made a predetermined choice and you rely on yourself at 9 p.m. after a really stressful day, you're going to go back to your old habits, right? It's like your brain reaches a decision fatigue at the end of the day in particular, but your brain also runs out of energy at some point and it takes mental energy to create a new habit to make a change. And so when you want to make a change, especially with food and your body weight, it's really important that you choose. Okay, here's my optimal hunger level. Okay, here's how I want to feel when I'm done eating. Okay, here's the food that's going to allow me to eat this way. Because then guess what? That part of your brain that made overeating a habit is going to make this new way of eating a habit. It's going to take choice after choice after choice after choice, right? Where you're like choosing your optimal hunger level, choosing your optimal hunger level, choosing your optimal hunger level, so much so that then one day you will have made that choice and followed through on that choice so many times. And of course, it doesn't need to be perfect, right? You're human. It's not going to be. But you will have made that choice so many times that you notice you don't even think about food unless you've reached that hunger level. Why? Because you made choice after choice after choice after choice, and now it's a habit. The same with putting the fork down when you still feel energized, light, and clean, and nourished. You've made that choice, and you've done it. And you've made that choice, and you didn't do it. And then you understood why. And then you made the choice, and you did do it. And then the choice, and then you did do it, right? You've done it over and over and over and over again, so much so. Then you're out at a restaurant, and you've stopped eating, and you're just talking with friends that are there. And you're like, whoa, wait a second. I I'm not finishing the food on my plate. I've never been to a restaurant and not finished the food on my plate. Or I can't believe I stopped eating. Like, look at all that food. I guess I'll take it home. And you like reflect it back and you're like, whoa, I just like did that without thinking about it. Yeah, because because you put in the work so that that is where you end up. You put in the work to make choice after choice after choice after choice so that it can be effortless. I just think it's really important to remember that we have to put in that work to make deliberate different intentional choices so that the new habits, the new way of thinking, the new way of eating becomes what just happens on autopilot. And with the buckets, right, choosing your optimal hunger level, choosing how you want to feel when you're done eating, choosing food that allows you to feel that way. It's also important to remember that the only thing between you and following through on that is an emotion. Right. Think about when we tell ourselves, oh, it's fine that I eat a little bit more because I worked out this morning. Right. 
your emotion in that moment is justified. (laughs) So then you want to develop a habit of stop using that emotion to eat past your optimal satisfaction level, right? Or maybe you're feeling really anxious. Maybe you feel a lot of anxiety in general. Maybe you have a situation where you're feeling a lot of anxiety around it. And maybe you're feeling anxious, let's say, because you know that you're going to work tomorrow and you have a performance review with an employee and you're terminating them and you just have like so much dread and you're feeling so anxious and you want a snack, right? Then in this example, the anxiety is what you want to choose to allow versus eat, right? You want to choose to allow the justification in the prior example or the anxiety in this example to be in your body without eating so that that becomes automatic. I used to pretty much always eat when I was anxious. And when I was a kid, I'd feel so much anxiety coming home from school, a lot of social anxiety. I would come home and like just decompress with TV and snacks and like It just was like a coping mechanism I used to use. I used to use it when I was procrastinating. I used to use it when I had a lot to do, just like anxiety in general, which I had a lot of, I used to use food to eat to cope with that. So I had to break that habit by making a deliberate, intentional, different choice, choice after choice after choice after choice of not eating because I was feeling anxious and allowing that anxiety to be there, making peace with that. And again, I have several other podcast episodes like how to feel and how to release different emotions that you can go find the step-by-step process, how to do that. Also, how to break any eating habit. You can go to that podcast as well. There's a bunch of podcasts where you can find how to do that. But my point in this podcast episode is that I had to make the choice over and over and over and over and over again to not eat simply because I was feeling anxious. So much so that I don't really have to think that at all anymore. I'm feeling anxious. My brain's instinctual reaction is not let's go get a snack, which is what it used to be, only because I made choice after choice after choice and now it's a habit. And so I highly suggest that you use the buckets, you use allowing your emotion to create kind of the framework and they are tools to help you make the choices that you want to align with the habits that you want in the future. Inside of the Naturally Thin for Life membership, I suggest to everyone that joins that membership that they use their buckets, they use allowing emotions for 90 days, and that they do that on paper so that those choices and choices and choices become the habits that they want, so that you habitualize choosing how you want to feel and feeling incredible instead of the food that leaves you feeling blah and subpar. And the last thing I will say with this is kind of what I was saying earlier, right? That temporary discomfort of making a choice that's different than the choices of your past is way less uncomfortable than feeling physically uncomfortable, feeling physically bloated, feeling physically lethargic. And when you train your brain to want to make a choice because you want to feel really good in your body, it feels so much better physically, but it also feels so much better emotionally. It's like that choice to make a different choice, the discomfort with that is so much more fleeting than making the same choices over and over and over again, knowing they're not going to get you to your goal. Because it feels way better to make a choice, albeit a different one from then your past choices. It feels way better to make a choice that you know is in alignment with who you want to be in the future than to make the same old choice that isn't who you want to be. So my friends, I highly suggest you embrace the slight discomfort that comes. And sometimes it feels like a little more discomfort, but in hindsight, it will feel like slight discomfort the discomfort that comes with making a different intentional choice and being really, really committed to that. I'm making this choice. I'm making this choice. I'm making this choice. And doing that work, right? Putting the work in to have the habits that you want, to have the effortlessness, to have the freedom, to have the peace, right? Because when I say work, I don't mean get up earlier and work out harder. (laughs) I I mean, the mental choice to recommit and to recommit and to make choices that are in alignment 
with the habits that you want in the future and to break the old habits that you don't want anymore and to embrace and to know and to welcome in that slight discomfort that's going to come when you're sitting down eating dinner with your family and you notice you're satisfied, but you still have food on your plate and you have that like back and forth in your mind, but you make that decision. No, I'm going to stop eating because I want to go to bed feeling energized and light and clean. And I'm excited about that. There will be that momentary discomfort, but you will go to bed then not only feeling physically light and clean and energized, which is a way fun to go to bed that way, but also you'll feel so proud of yourself because you know that's the habit you want in the future. All right, my friends, I hope you all have a great rest of your week and I will talk with you all next time. Hey friend, if you're enjoying the podcast, I invite you to come and check out the Naturally Thin for Life membership at naturallythinforlife.com forward slash join, where you'll learn the full Naturally Thin method broken down into simple and doable steps so that you lose the weight you want peacefully and rapidly and keep it off with ease for the rest of your life. The Naturally Thin for Life membership provides you with the tools to not only lose the weight you want, but customize your mindset and your habits to your unique body and life. As part of the membership, you also get an implementation workbook to ensure your inevitable success. Head over to naturallythinforlife.com forward slash join to get an inside look and tour of the Naturally Thin for Life membership. Hear from countless women who've utilized the tools and the extraordinary successes they've been able to achieve. I hope you join us over there at naturallythinforlife.com forward slash join.